Of all the opening scenes in the Star Wars saga, none are more well-crafted to set the stage than that of A New Hope. And the music, the first music we ever hear for this franchise, plays a huge role in the storytelling. This is Star Wars Music Analysis. Do it. The relatively small Tanta V4, being dwarfed by Darth Vader's massive Imperial Star Destroyer, the Devastator, perfectly depicts the classic David versus Goliath struggle. This imagery is what we call a rhetorical device, and more specifically, the use of a metaphor. Filmmakers and other creative artists know how to effectively use these devices to help tell us, as the audience, what we need to know without explicitly telling us. So, it should come as no surprise then that John Williams also leans on rhetorical devices to help set the stage in a mere 30 seconds for what will become one of the greatest franchises in film history. The trick and challenge of using metaphors though is that you need to reference and in some way use something that already exists and is familiar to a large enough population. Because of this, Williams has often been accused of stealing from other composers. In the case of this opening scene, that composer is Gustav Holst. Check out the similarities between the music of the opening scene and these excerpts from the opening movement to Holst's Opus 32. Both use a similar repeating rhythmic pattern, known as an ostinato, that switches between duple and triple divisions of an odd meter beat while a more lyrical fanfare plays over top. They also both rest on the same exact chord. Listen again to the final chords of Holst's Mars in comparison to the chords being played as we witness the full scale of our first ever Imperial Star Destroyer. I'll talk more about this chord and what it represents in a moment. But since we can see and hear such a clear connection between these two pieces, it begs the question of why? Why would Williams choose to pay homage so blatantly to this piece specifically? The whole suite that this movement is from is titled The Planets. So from the very beginning we see a relationship in titles between celestial bodies, planets and stars. But if we look at the title of this specific movement, we see another clear connection, Mars, the bringer of war. Each of the planets in our solar system, after all, is named after a god or goddess from Roman mythology. Mars, the god of war, Jupiter, the king of the gods, Neptune, god of the sea, and so on. This is why Holst composes something similar to a military march to depict our red neighbor though. And now we see an even deeper connection. Williams didn't just choose a piece based on the way it sounded, but also because of what it already represented space and war. It's the perfect metaphor for this entire saga. And at the apex of both pieces is this chord that we hear repeat over and over again. First, Holst and Williams are able to create tension simply by repeating the same chord continuously and in an unexpected pattern. It's almost as if the record player begins to skip. It gives us a sense of sitting still and left to only wonder what comes next which works perfectly for a Star Destroyer that never seems to stop growing. But more, the chord itself offers tension in its pitch relationship. The chord A flat, D flat, and G over C essentially gives us two open fifths that are set only a half step apart. This dissonance creates a clash for sure, but it also creates a sense of what's known as polytonality, or the sense of two simultaneous tonal centers. In this case, the C and G relate to C minor, while D flat and A flat relate to D flat major. This struggle between C and D flat can perfectly represent the struggle that now plays out between the rebels and the empire good and evil as well, both struggling for control. 
All of this is a perfect example of a quote by Russian composer Igor Stravinsky when he said that a good composer does not imitate, they steal. Stravinsky is simply stating that a good and skilled composer knows how to take ideas from other composers and turn them into their own piece that sounds uniquely like them. Today, more people can identify and recognize the music to the opening scene of A New Hope than whole smars in almost any setting. The music immediately gets softer as we get our first glimpse inside the Tanta V4. This gives us a sense that we are inside and away from the direct shooting momentarily. It also acts as a perfect way to make audible space for our favorite droids to have their first of many dialogues. But let me know what you think. Did Williams make this music his own? Does knowing the origin of this music and the metaphors behind it change the way you experience the opening scene? Tell me in the comments below and let me know if I've missed anything. And before you go, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to learn more about the music of a galaxy far, far away. And as always, may the be with you.